listening to the Faster Freedom Show, hosted by us, Sam Prim and Lucas Walls. Hello and welcome to the Faster Freedom Show. My name is Sam. And I'm Lucas. And Lucas, when is the last time that you have eaten a piece of food? I would say approximately uh, 67 hours ago. So Lucas has gone 67 hours without eating. He lost a bet to me. We arm wrestled. I won. Whoever lost had to not eat for 72 hours. So you're welcome. And there's health benefits too. That is not accurate. I decided to do this myself. And I was like, hey, Sam, you want to do it with me? And you're like, I'm not tough enough to finish that challenge. That is not true either. <laughs> I did not want to do it, though. You're yeah. right. You didn't ask me, though. But Lucas is on a 70-hour water-only fast. Yes. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little hungry, but I feel good. Feel is light, feel agile. Wave up and down, kind of a, like, have you has been like down, up? Like The are second you... day was the hardest. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm like, let's let's go. But probably because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. But I've, I've drank so much water. Like this thing is 30 ounces. And I had, I, I drink about seven of them a day right now. That's good for you. You should continue to do that even if you I, eat. I think that's a little much, but. Shane or Gaynor's got uh, his, his is done. I saw that. I saw a, a, the Chipotle <coughs> on his desk, only mm. half eaten, probably because his stomach shrunk. Yeah, so that's not what this episode's about, but that's just <laughs> a fun way to enter. So Lucas is almost done with his water fast. Today we have an absolutely packed episode mm. for you. We're going to be talking about some real estate stuff. We're going to get into um, self-managing rentals, pros and cons of those. We're going to talk about um, business. We're going to get into the business side of things and talk about our operating system for our company and whether you are a small business owner or just interested in the operations behind um, a company the size of ours, I think you'll find it interesting. Then the finance section is going to be um, on Dave Ramsey's uh, seven baby step program. We're just going to walk through, is that a good idea or not? And then the life one, we're talking about old Epstein, old uh, freaking... What, that What's better life than... Yes, <laughs> yes, topics. And then we're going to get into some riddles, which is always fun. Um, and Lucas is going to lose at least two of them. True or false to me, Ooh. would you rather? And then motivational. So that is a stacked episode. We talk business, fight. We talk business, finance, real estate, and life. And that's what we're doing. I love that, man. I'm super, super. This, I thought this went out. I don't hear it anymore. In mine. Hello. Is it still there? We're still there. I can hear you. All right. The cool. mic's fine. So who cares maybe about your ear? Maybe it just fell out of the ear. Yeah, the mic's fine though. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we'll have to edit that part out. No, we're nah, going to roll with it. Let's roll with it. Fuck it. All right, real estate. So if you are managing um, or if you're buying rental properties, you have two options mainly. There's some nuances we can get into, but let's keep it simple, Wall. So if you're buying rental properties, yeah. which everybody on here should do at some point in their life if they're looking for more financial security, you have two options. One would be to manage yourself, approve the tenant, move in the tenant, manage the tenant yourself. The other option would be to outsource and have somebody else do everything for you. Obviously, that comes with a cost. So we're going to break that down a little bit. Yeah, I, I love this topic. And it uh, I think it's a good analogy for a lot of things that you're going to try in your life. So um, let's let's get into it. Sam. When's the last think? time you shaved your beard as well? It's getting a little extra longer. I would say longer than normal. Well, yeah. another like an extra week or so? No, probably another extra like three days you're just changing stop changing so much i don't like change that much you're not drinking you're not shaving just do relax I'm not drinking or not eating you're not changing yeah you're gonna drink well oh, you're gonna get so drunk tonight i know i have we're going out to eat for my wife's birthday shout out ashley happy birthday babe um going out to mexican food a uh, place we've never been but uh, i gotta get like a little base of food in my stomach before i go straight to the margarita yeah you're gonna get you're gonna be feel like shit tomorrow you got to get a base of food in you okay so uh, managing your rental so lucas uh, kind of quickly our story of managing rentals is at first we pretty much from the jump hired it out to um provident i believe i don't know if they're around anymore but we hired it out to, Pro to provident for a while they did okay job i wouldn't say good or great but okay so then we decided to take it in house uh, there pretty quickly after um growing a company there and and blossomed into a pretty good sized company now but we have kind of done a little bit of both and i know there are certain people that should self-manage probably and certain people that shouldn't yeah uh that's exactly how our story went um I've seen it go the other way where mm -hmm. people start off managing on their own, then then outsource, or people start off managing on their own and then continue managing up to 40, 50, 60 
uh, Dustin. Dusty, and there's uh, a gentleman in the um, the group is going through that right now too in our community. Uh, Clint, mm-hmm. I believe, uh, is his name. Uh, he has like 46 doors. He's like, man, I just don't think I'm. I, uh, he's got half. Ma- he wants to bring it all in house and build out the company or build out a company. So uh, he kind of sees saw some of the struggles that that we saw with our third party management mm-hmm. and why we didn't love it as much. Uh, and one of those reasons is nobody's going to care about your assets like you care about your assets in my eyes. No, I agree. So when you um, outsource property management, the the pros of outsourcing, let's do that. And let's talk about the pros of insourcing. And then let's talk about the pros. The, we'll talk about pros. And then we'll talk about pros, which is our operating system. But um, so if you are um, outsourcing your property management, that means somebody else is approving tenants. That means somebody else is doing the background check, the credit check. They're doing the move in. They're collecting rent, they're handling the maintenance, the logistics, and then they're moving the tenant out and refilling the tenant. So they take everything off your plate. Most charge like a month's rent plus 10-ish percent of how much you collect every single month. So let's say you rent the property for $2,000 a month. A lot of companies will charge 2000 or maybe $1,000 to fill it and then 200 bucks a month after that. So it does cost, but the reason Lucas and I outsourced it first is because we didn't feel like we had the time or knowledge to properly property manage. I had a job that I traveled a little bit, Lucas had a job and we just were busy and we're like, we don't know how to approve tenants, we don't know how to do background checks, we don't know have, we don't have rent collection software, so we didn't have anything ourselves really or the time to learn it, so we outsourced it and then we saw very quickly that uh, most outsourced companies are not going to take care of the property or the tenant, honestly, because these are people that we care about in our units. It's not just you know people that are filling our units. There, there are tenants we care about them. We're landlords, not slumlords. So uh, we we did not feel like that property management took good enough care of our tenants or of our properties. Yeah, I feel like we were we were just a little afraid at mm-hmm. first. Like, hey, we bought our first house. That was a big enough hurdle to get over for us. We're like, man, we can't we can't do this. Like, mm-hmm. um, and I think a big part of that is just like the the, the bad like aura or, or myths that are around being a landlord too. Like mm-hmm. those maintenance calls for a, a leaky toilet in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Like. And those are, those are just myths, but those scared us off initially. And I think a lot of systems you can put in place if you bring the management in-house uh, can eliminate those anyway. Yeah. But we did not know. So that's that's the way we started was outsourced first. Outsourced first. So the pros of that are they know the um, the rules. Um, there are like, or they should know, I guess, if you're do, I'm assuming you're going with a decent property management company. There are like certain laws, like fair federal housing laws, where you have to treat all tenants the same. You can't approve of a tenant for a certain thing and then not the next one or charge different things. So um, that that kind of reason is another reason that scared us off, but that is a pro of a good property management company does know all the legalities that keep you out of legal yeah. trouble. And there's a lot of damn paperwork involved with those legalities and uh, a property management company for the most part would have all those documents already where whereas you would probably have to go find them on the internet or uh, find them from another property management company that's willing to share. So uh, that documentation can be overwhelming at times. Yeah, and it's changed a little bit, but another pro of um, outsourcing, because I definitely think outsourcing is right for some people, we'll get into that at the end of the section, Lucas, yeah. but um, you used to like have to meet tenants at the property and mm-hmm. you used to have to, you know, do a lot of different manual things. Now with technology, um, you know, you used to have a property management software, a, you know, background check software, probably a lot of like actual written paperwork and meet tenants at properties, prospective tenants. And now it's all can be done through property management software, the the background check, the credit check, everything can be done. Um, they can go look at the property via virtual lock mm-hmm. boxes that give them codes when they get in within range of kind of like a, a lock box for realtors. So a super so technology has made it easier, but for a while there, that was one another one of the reasons why we didn't we outsource it because we didn't have time to do all that. Yeah, absolutely. But technology has helped that. It really has. Like mm-hmm. we, I was reading. Uh, you know, just investing books and landlord books about, um, it's called Landlording on Autopilot. Uh, if you've ever read that book, it's, it's pretty good, but it's not very relevant anymore. Anymore, And it's mm-hmm. it wasn't that long ago. Uh, so it's crazy how fast that has changed and made property management and being a landlord that much more efficient. Yes, especially to do it in-house. Or it has made it more efficient for these property management companies to potentially charge less. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of some pros. Can you think of any other pros of a property management company? Of, hi- of hiring it yep. out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, one of the pros that I truly believe in is, um, you know, 
and it and we'll get into this but it depends what part of the business that you want to focus your time on which parts you enjoy but uh, if you're not focusing your time on property management, which can be a lot of time, especially as you build up properties, you are able to focus your time on uh, building and scaling your business. Mm-hmm. So going out and finding new deals, uh, managing projects, going and finding money, lining up money for those other projects. So um, that's the type of biz- part of the business that I love focusing on is just the growth and scaling and uh, the day-to-day operations of the property management is not necessarily for me. So I would consider if that's you, then I would I would say that's a pro as well. Awesome, I like it. All right, what about um, you? Any other pros? I don't think so. I was thinking like, Trevin, we know we have our the little phones up on Instagram and TikTok and trying to um, get like us in a shot. The new desk is like half this width, so we're gonna be close. We're a little far now. I yeah. can't even touch you. That's okay. I'm no. fine with that. Is it? Yes. Okay. Okay. But we're gonna be a lot closer, and you will be able to play footsie with me if you want in between. So Good. let's talk about the Good. Let's talk about the pros of managing in-house walls. Yeah. What do you? What are they? I like the pros. Uh, you know, this I'm a believer in, in managing in-house from the jump. Um, just learning the process. I know it's a lot. Like we just talked about all that documentation, mm-hmm. all the all those laws. It is easier now, though. It than is easier even when now. we started eight years ago, nine yeah. years ago. And uh, so the biggest pro to me is you you will learn that stuff. Uh, you don't have to be an, an expert by any means, but learn enough to follow the rules and and have some property management experience so you're able to, when you outsource, because I believe it's at some point you either outsource or, or build a property management company, one or the other, mm-hmm. um, instead of just managing it yourself um, as a solopreneur. So when you outsource, um, you were able to speak the language of a property manager and manage them effectively so you know when they are doing something that is not up to your standards, um, you know, maybe you 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 will know and recognize that and be able to help mitigate it yeah so it's kind of like one of those things a similar analogy would be like doing some of the work yourself in rehab so you know when people do it for you exactly so you can be a good property project manager and now this is property manager so yes or be an excellent salesperson before you can be a great sales manager you gotta Mm -hmm. you know most times you gotta walk the walk and talk the talk before you talk the talk yeah um yeah i think i don't know if we said that right but i think that uh I agree, and I didn't. I wasn't listening to every single single thing you said. Go but figure. people have the. I wasn't on my phone. I just was spacing. But um, so many people, mean if they manage themselves, there does come a point, and I think that's what you're getting to, that where they either have to start a company mm-hmm. or they have to hire it out. You're right. not going to be just you managing 40, 50 rentals. That's, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. So you'll know a little bit. So I like that. Yeah. It um, allows you to understand the process, and then we alluded to this a little bit earlier that you are able to um, potentially save some money by managing yourself. Absolutely. Property management companies cost with 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 a two thousand dollar rent, which is I think pretty close to national average, I mean with the lease up fees and the markups, it's costing you three hundred ish dollars a month, four hundred mm-hmm. bucks a month. That if you do it yourself, yes it's your time, but you can make you know, make that like pay yourself four hundred bucks a month yes. rather than them a month. I think that's the key. I think if you if you want to be full time investing or real estate in some sort of way, being a property manager for your own properties is a great, great way to do that. To pay yourself kind to, of. You can pay yourself that extra 300 bucks a month. So three, 400 bucks a month, that's in addition to, mm. to the cash flow that you're getting off the property Get as 10 the properties investor. as might be your salary. That could be your salary right there if you are the property manager. But um, that's a great way to, to, to transition into um, a full-time real estate investing, but uh, you will have to do the day-to-day operations and being a property manager, and you're, it'll probably hinder your scaling of your portfolio a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're most likely going to, for at least a while, have that full-time job and be trying to do it all. Yep. What other pros do you think are doing it in-house? Doing it in-house, saving money, um, learning the business, so you mm-hmm. can so you can lead your management company. Um, you know, being able to go full-time quicker. Um, I would say. Um, you're able to, you know, it forces you to make relationships with contractors and vendors that okay. you normally wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it also, it forces a lot of things. It also forces you to get dialed in or at least decent at, at bookkeeping and understanding where your money is. You just get a, big, a bit better understanding of the overall business. And if you're going to scale this to a certain level, you will need those type of business understanding. So Lucas. Yeah. Do you think everybody that starts buying rental property should manage in-house? No, absolutely Why not. Why not? 
Well, I just feel like there's, you know, everybody has different goals when they start in real estate and everybody has a different situation. So um, if you want to be 100% hands off, um, you're, you're, you're okay with maybe not cash flowing quite as much on a property. You'd rather save that You'd rather trade that money for time freedom. Uh, maybe you have a great uh, W-2 got job that gives you a lot of income and you're just, um, so someone like that, I feel like should outsource immediately and forever, mm-hmm. personally. Yeah, and I think a, a lot of it is, or can, some of it can be personality based. So if you are a super organized person, um, you're structured, you're maybe a little bit lower on the empathy um, spectrum than others. I think that is potentially a better property manager. Like you want to care about these people, but if you're, you know, not organized and or you're kind of one of those bleeding hearts that you really believe that they're they're late on rent eight months in a row because eight of their grandmas have died every single month right yeah. at the beginning of or they their car breaks down you know eight times a month or just all of these extra extra stories yeah. that people you know, pull at your bleeding heart to get you to, to get the not pay rent. And it's a business. You need to collect rent or you'll go out of business. So sure. not everybody has the, I don't want to be, it's kind of an aggressive but way to say it, but not everybody has the backbone to be a good For property sure. Manager. No, that's so true. I'd be a terrible property mm-hmm. manager. Uh, I'd give away the farm, but uh, that's why I don't do it. But if that is you um, and uh, you, you're a bleeding heart, which like I am, there the the way to get around there is a way to mitigate that and um, you just got to follow the process and the process is the bad guy and you can't change the process no legally you can't yes. change the process so you have to follow that process and uh, the process is the bad guy you're not the bad guy but you're still gonna have those conversations where you're yeah, like yeah, that's okay so that, that's what I, yeah and, and so i think it's i think i would most people if they can if they're willing to be somewhat organized and follow the process i'd think it would behoove you to start out managing the properties yourselves what yeah, do you think i you agree. have the time i agree yeah yeah you, you just learn the business that much faster and then uh you'll understand when it's the right time to either build out a team of your own or um you know outsource the whole thing to allow you to free up time to scale and if you do it the right way then it doesn't take 20 hours a month for yeah. one property, your first property, and you're not getting phone calls at 3 a.m. because of a leak. For code. sure. That's like a, it's, it's almost, it's, I've, I've heard intelligent people say that, like that that's why you, yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna battle my boy Taylor next week, but like stock market, you don't have to change leaky toilets in the middle of the night. I don't know anybody that does that. That's not like a thing. People are sleeping at night. Um, and so- That's what I do. Yes, that's what I do. Um, Tyler parties all night, but most people just sleep at night. But well, he's 21, give him a break. Yes, that's true. But you don't you don't need to go change a toilet in the middle of the night. Will you change a toilet or would you maybe eventually? Yes, but it won't be in the middle of the night. Yeah. If you tell them to turn off the fucking water and go yeah. back to bed if they do call you, which they won't. They're, like, they're not, a, not gonna happen. Yeah, and there, there, there are true emergencies out there. They, they don't happen very often, you know what I Especially mean? Especially with one property, if you do things the right way. For sure, for sure. Um, I had another one, a pro of uh, managing in house and uh, maybe building out a team. And if you get really good at it, um, you can create additional revenue by uh, managing for other people as well. Like we're doing. Exactly. Not really, we're kind of revenue, not profit. We're kind of just working on our team. Exactly. Cool. I like it. So that's our thoughts on self managing your rental. So that was kind of fun. It was fun. What do you think? What is pros, Lucas? Yeah, pros. Part uh, of the business segment, in case you're wanting business segment, brought to you by the Faster Freedom newsletter. You just go to our website, and you can probably sign up there, right? Or, or just just DM me. I'll send you the newsletter. This is what this segment's brought to you by the newsletter. Nice, love that. Thank you. We should have like a sponsor for each segment. I, I'm going to going the rest of this episode. I'll probably forget next episode. All right. Uh, so pros. Well, uh, pro stands for prosper operating system not a perfect acronym but that Close is enough. okay mm-hmm. um well let's let's talk about just like an operating system and uh you know when people think of operating system probably first things that pops in their head is like iphone Apple. like uh, ios mm-hmm. yeah right mm-hmm. um so um it's just just how the phone operates and that's exactly what it is for business it's how how the business operates um before we get to pros we'll talk about an operating system that we're on in the past mm-hmm. and you know because um there's a lot of operating systems that not a lot but a handful that have been been created for businesses to take their op- operating system and no matter what type of business you have you can implement the majority of that operating system in your business and well for small businesses mainly is what they're made for i would 
Yeah, yeah. The, like the, the under, ones that we know for sure. I mean, but the yeah, but the ones we're referencing are for like hundred employees or under kind of five hundred. Like that's not, true. Not for, you know, we're not talking about operating systems for Apple. I'm yeah, sure they have one. But they probably have a pro- proprietary one. I, I assume, would assume yeah. so. Yes. But anyway, it's just a just a way to do things, uh, a way to way to speak language, way to do things, cadence of meetings. Um, in a in a communication platform for your team and the in the rest of your uh, for your leadership team and the rest of your team as well, I would say. Mm-hmm, for any, sure. Any other way, uh, ways to describe what a what an operating system is? Nope, I don't think so. It's just a way to um, know like when you're when we started, you're just like yes, we're gonna have our, our meeting, we're gonna check in and do all this. But the, uh, a good operating system is gonna give you cadence of meetings, lengths of meetings. How often have bigger picture meetings, smaller picture meetings, how to communicate, how the organizational chart works. It just allows your business to operate and flow with some type of efficiency and some type of accountability. And, and synergies, mm-hmm. right? So you're you're all speaking the same language. You're moving the same direction. Mm-hmm. Um, Cock swing. Yeah. Well, that's not part of it, but I do know what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds way dirtier than it is. So uh, some of the operating systems out there, I guess our, our favorite one is that changed our business is a book called Traction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that book um, explains the operating system called EOS or Entrepreneur Operating System. And if, if you have any sort of company between one and you know 50 people right now, I would highly recommend reading that book and implementing it into your business. Even if you implement 50% of it, it will change your business forever. Mm -hmm. So super cool book, Traction, changed our lives, changed our business. Um, But uh, we started to kind of deviate away from it a little bit, just Mm -hmm. the way we're structured here. And which kind of opened our eyes to maybe maybe needing a new operating system. So we researched a few more and then uh, didn't love those either, so we decided to kind of kind of create our own kind of in-house operating system based on what we believe and how our businesses operate. Yeah, so basically, we've been using Traction for a while. It's very documented and uh, regimented, regimented, and we had been tweaking it for probably about a year f- to fit our business model because it's <clears throat> made and explained for one business and one business model. We have four separate companies that all kind of flow together, but all act on their own, that have all meet together, that have board of you know executive team and things like that. So it's our business is a little bit unique, so we needed a unique operating system. So we basically kind of took all the books we read from Good to Great, to uh, The One Thing, to um, EOS, the Traction Book, to um, all the, everything and, and kind of made our, uh, took a little bit of the best pieces of everything we've learned and made our own system. Yeah, made our own system and, and just how we like to do things here as well. So mm-hmm. there's some fresh stuff in there too. We didn't take everything. No, so. it took the best pieces. And we, yeah. Yeah, we created our own to yeah. a certain degree for a lot of it. But yeah, it's definitely unique. Nobody else has a pros, prosper operating system. For sure, yeah. We're thinking about maybe... Uh, you know, creating a generic version and um, getting that out there to to our community as far as like our students and stuff, but but maybe not. I don't know. What we'll do you see. think about this? Um, eh, questionable. Okay, um, it's just so loud. Like, it's, why you is think it this so is loud? Annoying. Well, like, that is a very like annoying. Stomping on the table. Well, I did it twice. You do a lot more than twice. They probably add up to the same amount of decibels. Oh, stop it. There's not. There's no decibel math going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, uh, so the operating system is um, something that we're launching this year, and I do think it'll be something we will get um, somewhat of a public facing, whether we read like a handbook about it and release it or give it away or sell it or give it to our, our people in our community. Um, but I think uh, that's a 25 thing, not just because we're busy, but because I think we're going to change quite mm-hmm. a few things actually implementing the system that we created. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's a great question on here, and I want to get to it. Uh, thanks for this question to your could, Thanks, Tyler. Could someone use pros in their personal life? Um, and this is an interesting one to me because, um, you know, while I do think, you know, your personal life and your family need need some sort of structure and, and vision, um, it's, it's hard. I have found it challenging <laughs> <laughs> to implement, you know, business-type structures and – things and meetings why is that been difficult into it's just like i don't know i mean it's just you know <laughs> the, the certain phrase i got was uh you know our family's not a business so. i think it's more of our family's not a fucking business yeah Lucas. yeah is that what you got something along those lines <laughs> so you know i i tried <laughs> at to least you s- tried i of got course. i got yelled at because i didn't even 
I try. I didn't even try. I had to do. I had to do PowerPoint presentations to get the clarity. There so you go. You're good. You know better than I did. In, in general, I think there needs to be some sort of organization and structure in your your home life, your personal life, but it doesn't have to be a true operating system. Just I kind of whatever well, works best for you. And yeah, your I think so. But I think taking some of the things and some people can maybe some of the ideas. And part of our operating system is having. And I we got to check with our boys. I doubt they're doing it, mm. but. Um, part of our operating system is having our, our main leaders to have a weekly check-in with their significant others. Um, just five minutes, 10 minutes, however they want to do it. We didn't like force them to do exactly it or any certain style, but just having them talk with their significant other spouse about what's going on in business, how are things and personal life, just communicate a little bit because the stronger we are and they are at home, the stronger they'll show up at the office. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Yeah, I love cool. that. So there is some overlap in that mm -hmm. aspect. Very for cool. sure. How, and how are you doing? What do you do for your um, business part of your personal life? Um, so we, you know, like uh, we, 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 we set some goals okay. at the beginning of the year. So obviously we're, we're in the new year here. So you know, went out to eat and set a few goals for, for Ash and I and for the boys and for our family. So nothing crazy. Um, and then we just, we, we keep it pretty simple. You know, we try to try to have dinner together every night. Um, we got our routine. We do probably, we probably do operate off some sort of operating system. Mm -hmm. It's just not documented as, as, as strict as maybe what our business is. Do you guys is. have like weekly meetings, check-ins, things don't like that? don't yet. I don't know. I feel like. You making our people do it, but you're not doing oh, it? Oh, Ash and I do. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. We got it in, on the calendar for, uh, I think it's nine or nine fifteen every night. Every night? No, I'm sorry. Every Sunday. Yeah, ours is, our, uh, we just started doing ours on our Sunday at 8. Nice. Got in the calendar, just a little reminder, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, checking in, we're going over our year goals this Sunday. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's super good. Yeah, that, that's great, probably because it's beginning beginning of the year, right? But uh, a normal meeting probably, you know, looks like, hey, what do we got coming up this week? Where can I help you? Where can you help me? Where do we need a, si a babysitter mainly? Uh, just logistically to help clean up any of the the weird stuff that could go on and cause confusion and friction between you and your, your significant and other. And we're, we're just started ours, so we're working through ours. And um, I we've had some stuff like, you know, we're going to be – everybody should make them their own. But, like, um, what was – was there a time this week when you felt like I wasn't there for nice. you? Was there yeah. a time this week when you were, like, super excited that I did something? Um, you know, and then what what we got coming with the week. So we're Very trying cool. to trying Go to a do little it. deeper. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I'm all about going deeper. Plug your most mom, but it's part of my life. Continue. All right, on to <laughs> finance. We'll Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave Ramsey. Actually, I don't think my mom listens to every episode. I, I think she, she gets bored with it, but Mine does. my dad does. <laughs> Sorry, Colleen and Jeff, don't tell mom about that part. Um, all right, so Dave Ramsey. So obviously, there's this whole thing of everybody dogs on Dave Ramsey. Um, I don't think he's like a horrible person by any means. Uh, I feel like I have a little more right than some people to dog on him. I, I probably, honestly, Tyler, I mean, we do a Dave Ramsey like um, rebuttal video like once a month. We don't even do it that often. But he did call me a liar on his show and his show gets millions of views. So I don't care, it was awesome. I would wish he would do it again. Um, so it's not, I'm, I'm not like coming at him from that, but I feel like, I feel like, anyways, I feel like a little more justified poking at him because he called me a liar. But um, let's, poke his five or seven baby steps to his personal finance plan. Yeah, so I'll tell you a little. My history with Dave is a little different than yours. Correct. It's similar until yeah. a certain point. So I started my, um, you know, my, my journey and just to financial literacy and investing. And uh, I just I just love that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I when I dove in, I dove in hard and read books and podcasts. Hard but, and deep. Yep. Yep. There we go again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he has is that a radio show he has that? Yes, it's radio. It's you did. I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. So that's where I heard him was when I used to a travel as an engineer and it would be on the radio and I would mm -hmm. listen to it like uh, I would either be listening to an audiobook about personal finance investing real estate whatever or listening to his show because people would call in with like uh, problems or issues or just like guidance from Dave and uh, you know they would they would talk about certain scenarios and a lot of it was investing and he has a uh, you know particularly conservative obviously um, ideals around uh, finance, of mm -hmm. course, but I think it was a good foundation for me to understand budgeting, you know, simple principles like, you know, obviously 
spend less than you earn, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, where is that money that you're spending going and all that and tracking that? And I, I did that for a long time, and I think it helped set the foundation for um, being financially free for, for the long term for me. So I have, and that, and, and, uh, but your relationship got closer through the years. So, so then Dave, Dave and I, (laughs) no, then we, uh, you know, we read his book Entree leadership, Mm -hmm. which was a, which a solid book. Yep. It was, it was probably the book that started to turn me off on him a little Mm -hmm. bit though, as well. Um, you know, uh, Yes, I don't know if I how deep I should go. Well, on no, that, I, but I, I can, but like just the the there, and I think this is what aside from his beliefs and his um, his strategies, I think what turns a lot of people off and what turned me off from him started was just the self righteousness, the like, if any of my employees are are you know found to be cheating on their husband or wives, they're fired, stuff like that. That's like you can't do like that's just like too much. You're not like fucking God or anything yeah. like that. So. That's where um, he started to turn me off. But I think similar with you, right? Yeah, just a little, little condescending nature that I that I saw. And then, um, you know, I, I know he's he built a real estate portfolio at some point, and then the banks called all his notes due, and that's why he got a super bad taste in, in his mouth on debt. And uh, I would probably fucking too if that happened to me. So um, he's so. Was that not where you were going with the turning off of on him? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, exactly okay. where I was going. Um, and then obviously, yeah, I did that shit with you. So, um, you know, respect him and his business. But uh, at this point in our lives, his strategies are not for us. No, and it's just, just, uh, it's just my um, issue with the actual strategy. It's just not, it's not realistically replicatable mm-hmm. for anybody but Dave. There is that uh, that tweet that I saw like a few months ago now that I loved. It was perfect. It was somebody like all about Dave. Dave Ramsey is worth five, six, seven hundred million dollars, whatever it is, he's, you know, going to be the first billionaire with no debt. And they're bragging on it. And then, like, I would thought, like, that's pretty cool. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, that's not cool. There's hundreds, if not thousands of billionaires in this world. There's millions of multimillionaires. And there's one person that's done it without debt. When there's millions that have done it with debt, do you want to do the the thing that one person can do? Or do you want to do the thing that 99.99999% of wealthy people do? So it just doesn't make sense for somebody to follow his path if they want to create wealth. If And I think this is a great way to say it, and I'm trying not to be condescending. If you want to live a normal life, and not have to worry about money and retire at 65, then Dave Ramsey mm-hmm. should be who you should follow to a T. But if you want to live an extraordinary life and have um, you know extra money, time freedom, retire when you want, maybe retire in your 50s, maybe earlier, be able to have nice things and enjoy life and not like pinch pennies, then he's not who you should follow. You should mm-hmm. probably follow some of the things that we teach and we do. So it's just a different thing. And I, I think there's a lot of people that want what we want. And if they follow Dave's path, they're just not going to get there. Let, let's go nice. through the seven step yeah, plan here. Seven quickly. baby steps of, uh, and we'll talk he's calling about, you a baby, by the way. Yeah. We'll talk about, uh, each step and, and figure out, and then we'll just, we'll just have a conversation on what, what's your thoughts on each step. So step one, before anything, uh, uh, save a thousand dollars. For your starter emergency fund agreed i agree too and i did it yes yep because he told you to yep lucas well i just you just need people need just some path to follow i know i'm kidding a thousand that's perfect i love yeah it. and i was like i don't know i don't know what i need to save i don't know this that i don't know what to do first um and he was like this is what you should do and he's so convincing about it and i oh. and i still believe, believe yeah it I, think, I, I, I was well, i was kidding about the luke's thing i agree 100 percent. get a thousand dollars in in as a, as an emergency fund somewhere yeah savings yep. account don't touch it all right step two uh-oh pay here's off. where we take a little bit of a left turn yeah pay off all debt except the house using the debt snowball so the debt snowball i believe is you pay off in full the lowest uh like if you have like credit cards and uh, student loans and whatever has the lowest amount of um you know left to pay off you pay that off and then you pay off the next one the next one the next one i believe that's how it is which makes sense because it's a snowball mm-hmm. i'm going to create the debt snowball of wealth yeah the more debt you get the more wealth you create but anyways i, I think Same again principles, again they're... that's okay um but like a lot of people if you're gonna if you're gonna pay off your car that costs you 500 bucks a month like you could invest that 500 bucks a month and make a lot of money yeah that, that's one way to look at it and yeah i think um i think there's certain debts to pay off and if you if you have 
consistent, outstanding credit card debt. Like I think credit. You yeah, gotta yeah get I think that out if it's there. gonna affect your credit score, yeah. that's maybe the line I would draw yeah. in the sand. If you if it's going to affect your credit score, mm-hmm. then uh, and negatively affect your credit score, then pay it off as soon as possible. But your student loan making payments every month, your yeah. car making payments every month, that's not affecting your credit score. If anything, it can strengthen your credit score. Yeah, for sure. So I, I don't know. I think this is different for everybody. I would look at your your budget for sure, and. Uh, see where you're at see where your extra money is if that's where you want to put it great um if if you think that money that your that your extra disposable income every month is better suited in another investment vehicle i think that's good i don't think there's anything wrong with it i think if you have an interest rate that's let's say eight percent or above um you know that's similar to what you're going to get in in most investment strategies so maybe that's a that's one you go attack but uh, definitely like a 20% credit card, but if you got a 3% house or car payment, like uh, 3% interest on a, on a car, I would not necessarily recommend paying that off. Um, and same thing is to go, goes with student loans in my eyes as well. Financial security and wealth are created like over time, mm-hmm. right? Like you need assets with equity to create wealth. Yeah. We're not talking like living until you're, you know, retiring 65. We're talking yeah. like substantial asset-based wealth comes over time as For assets sure. grow in value. So this is where my biggest issue with it is assuming you want that assuming you want financial security and and wealth through assets you can't i don't believe have enough time to create that wealth if you're paying everything else off if you have 50 grand of student loans two um you know forty thousand dollar car payments you know so you have what is that 120 grand is that right Sure. 130 grand, I think. I have 130 grand of this debt that Dave tells you to pay off, and you're making 60 grand a year, 70 grand a year. It's going to take you several years. So if you're 25 and you have 130 grand in that type of debt at decent interest rates, you're not going to pay it off until you're 45, 35. Like it's going to take you 10, 15, 20 years to pay it off when then you start to buy assets when what I'm telling you to do is make those payments, don't affect your credit, start to buy assets now. Yeah. So you're not you're gonna get in the game too late if your goal is financial freedom. For sure. I would rather and we'll get to some of these steps in the in the future here or in the near future. Near future. Um, so say you have, I don't know, a student loan that's fifty thousand dollars left on it mm-hmm. and you got seventy thousand dollars in your account. Mm-hmm. Um, to me and 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 your monthly income is definitely exceeding your monthly expenses with that student loan payment in there i i would rather have the 70 grand cash in my account and continue chipping away at the monthly payment personally Mm -hmm. um if you you know diminish your reserve funds so much to a point where you're running so thin just to pay off debt that's that's not super smart to me either i think that that cushion is is more important than the debt payoff personally and part of the issue is no move on to step three with this whole plan and you'll get to it as we go through the plan is his plan is like saving living frugally penny pinching don't spend extra money don't buy the coffee don't like and I know there's more to life than like spending money on things, but it's nice to be able to spend money on things. So like his plan, in my opinion, part of it doesn't really allow you to enjoy life until you're at step seven. And I want to enjoy life step one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and retire early. Like his his plan is not to have your cake and eat it too plan. And mm-hmm. there is a financial have your cake and eat it too plan and it's leveraging debt. Yeah, I think you can you can do number seven along the way of all we're this. doing number seven specifically with real estate we're doing real estate the way to do it when you're able to buy discounted properties and not have to have large chunks of money to put down towards investments that's why real estate is so powerful and that's why we were able to do it on step one and two of this and then before we get to step three last thing you mentioned having extra enough money to pay off your debt but not paying off your debt with the money you have that's what companies do. Like, I haven't seen Apple's books recently. I know they had kind of a rough year, but in general, I've seen them before over the past several years. And most of the time in general, they're sitting on 200 billion in cash and 100 billion in debt. So Apple, I think they're smart. And I know they're a business and you're not a business, so I'm just trying to have somewhat correlation here. They can pay off their debt twice and they don't because yeah. they understand what debt can do if it's leveraged properly. If it's and if it's smart, if that's at a two or three percent interest, yeah, that ma- that makes no. They're percent. probably not paying much interest on their debt. Yeah, I would guess. right. I would guess too. Yeah. yeah. Um. Cool. Step Pretty three. Solid was, borrowers. Yes. Yeah, step three. Uh, save three. All oh, they sa- just Barclay did just ground downgrade them, I believe, which crushed their stock. But save three to six months of expenses in a 
fully funded emergency fund. I think just fully cashed, I would yeah. say. Like, I agree with that one. Yeah, I think that's fine. And again, I think some, I don't, like, that's the thing. These are, you can do that while you're buying a rental or flipping house. Mm-hmm. So you can do some of this too. It's good to have money in reserves in case um, shit happens. So I think that's fine. But what he's saying is literally he's saying you have to do this and nothing else. Yeah. So that's step three. So have some, have your $1,000 emergency starter fund. Um, pay off all your debts except your house. Step three is, um, you know, have your uh, expenses yeah. for three to six months now. So, so if you're in, in know your like step one should be build a budget to mm-hmm. me, like understand what your monthly expenses are and understand if you're in the red or in the black every month and figure out ways to get in the black. Step one to me. Um, so if your expenses are $5,000 a month, let's say uh, three to six months would be $15,000 to thirty thousand uh, dollars sitting in a in a checking or saving account for emergency fund there and there are things that are emergencies out there so if you have that money an emergency comes up make sure you use that money for it mm-hmm. and then you can always rebuild it later that's what that money is for otherwise it's just gonna sit there and do nothing agreed all right so that was that was pretty simple so step four invest 15 per so you so part of this is we're at step four. Some people will take decades to get to step four. Yeah. And now we are investing. Yeah. We're not investing up until this point. We're not making any money. I guess 401k, but like 401k, maybe if your employee matches, he doesn't. But you're investing zero dollars in your future yeah. until you get to step four, which will some people will be in their 40s. And, and to me, the big, you know, this is all saving and budgeting, which is which is great. But there's a whole other piece of this equation, which needs to be to increase your active income. Increase the top line. Yeah. So that could be whatever whatever we we mm-hmm. have many podcasts about what that could be with side hustles or investments or promotions whatever that looks like but big piece of that probably bigger piece than the money you save personally you just maybe you should do like once a month the 72 hour thing yeah you like it mm-hmm. you like it yeah well no not when you say it like that no I take no, that no, back. no no stop it all right step five um save for your children's college fund so i uh, do four, four we're on sammy Step four, oh, 15% of your household income. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. So step 15% of your household income. I guess, yeah, we need to finish the thought. But my issue with that is it's going to take people years to start investing. And you have to invest, whether it is, whether you are the stock market guy and you're putting money in, you know, you know mutual funds or just straight stocks or whatever you're doing, you're not doing anything until yeah. step four. And 15% to me is just like, pretty arbitrary mm-hmm. you know it could be um depends how much you make you know depends if, how much you make if you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars and you low expenses you should be doing 30 percent. but if you're making 50 grand then 50 percent still might be a lot for sure so um pretty arbitrary there um I, I don't mind it it's just um um i think there's a lot of different investment strategies that could go along with that and that is just like very surface level in my eyes. So. Correct. Yeah. So I, I'm. I don't think it's bad, but it, what our step, what our process is, and maybe we should come up with a, like a like opposite seven step thing. But it's yeah, we should. But it's it's you can do this stuff throughout the process. Like we're yeah. that. This is this to me, and I know I keep whatever dogging on it, but fuck it. It's like this is that either or like type of like mindset. And that's that's Dave. Yeah, and our mindset <laughs> is both and. Like yeah. you can have both this and that. You don't have to pick. Yeah. Cool. All right, now. Step five. Save for your children's college fund. Well, and I, ho- hopefully they're not 18 by yes, this time. That's the other part about it. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. Because when you start that early, then yeah. uh, it has a, obviously a much, much better chance to grow to a point where you can actually use it. Um, side note, not everybody goes to college, first Correct. of all. So um, yeah, there are some great um, college saving plans out there that you don't there's the penalties have been lessened and you can roll them over to a Roth IRA nowadays I think they're going to so, continue to be lessened yes, from the sound of that. people we've been so talking that, to that's really good because that's kind of the direction our society's heading I feel like yep so I think saving for your children's college fund is not a bad thing right um, you know, uh, your uh, you got scholarships and got, I think your parents paid for a little bit, but you had student loans and things like mm-hmm. that. I was fortunate enough to not have my parents did pay for my college, and I got scholarships as well. I think half ride maybe. Um, so they, uh, you know, so I was able to not have to leave uh, college with any debt, which was awesome. So I again, but I like this. I think some people are like I'm going to make my kids pay for their own college, and I think that's fine if you can't afford it. But if you can afford it, I think you should pay for your kids, uh, your own kids' college. Like there's um. There's uh, someone in our office is a friends with um, your friends with for a long time that uh, he had to pay for a uh, majority of his college yeah. when his parents could very much afford it. So yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah, I think uh, 
there's other ways to build those type of uh, life skills uh, mm -hmm. than putting your child through hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars of debt. But yeah, mo most of mine was paid for, like you said. Um, but you had some, and so did Ashley come out. I right? did have mm -hmm. some, yeah. And Courtney didn't have and any we, either, which and is And we did not do the debt snowball our, on ours. We um, we started making good money, so we paid it off. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. So we focused on increasing the income, and then we were at a, a point where we could utilize some of those reserves to just pay off the whole chunk. So we, we never made a payment above the the. Until you the just minimum, chunked it down. Until we just paid it off. And the cool thing about that um, process of increasing your top line to then chunk things off is when the things are chunked off, then you got to, you know, you saved 50 grand and paid off your student loans in two years. It, Next couple of years, you got an extra 50 grand. Can I tell you another way? I don't, I don't, the reason why I really don't like the debt snowball. Kenny, Tyler, is that okay? Um, I was good with it. So you can pay... No matter what type your of debt it is. Your not in your ear even close to right. Uh, are you doubled up today? I'm always doubled up. Damn, bro. Look All right, at keep slick. going. Finish your thought. So no matter what the debt is on, whether it's a you know car, house, student loan, if you make extra payments towards the principal value, um, obviously you're paying that principal down, um, but that minimum payment stays the same. Mm -hmm. So whether you have a $100,000 loan balance and then you pay that down to $5,000 at some point, that payment is still the same along the way, the whole way, mm -hmm. for most part. On. Yes, oh yeah, here it is, yeah. you're right. Um, so um, you don't save money in your pocket by making these extra payments in the long run. So might as well just spend the minimum, save it up, then pay it off so you have no payment. I agree, I like that. And then step six, pay off your home early. I fucking hate that one. Yeah, that one's a bad one. Yeah. And um, maybe if you know interest rates, grow to you know 9 10 11 12 15 percent maybe um i got a house in 3.25 percent i'm mm -hmm. not paying it off no fucking way and i just don't understand where are people getting all this money especially dave's core audience i would like to see the case studies because we have case studies i would yeah. love to see i get people calling and say i've heard has seen the clips of you know i'm 39 and i have no debt and make this much money you know and they just like they like had done some of it themselves but they weren't following this exact process For they sure. just they just people are debt free that don't even know don't follow day's plan so that it's it's not like he owns the no debt yeah. but yeah. like the paying off from early like where are people getting all this money right. with inflation today like this like you're gonna have to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to do all of this more than that to get to sex to yeah. sex to get to step six to get to sex to get to sex you just a couple no all right um so step six i think to get to that in your 40s like we're not talking retire just get all this stuff it's you're gonna have to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year people don't make that and the cost yeah. of everything so my plan is like for like normal people that don't make a ton of money to skip ahead to step seven so yeah uh, excuse me Jeez. whoa that was right in the mic did you hear that tyler yeah let's uh I, i've got a lot of water in me so um anyway geez old peas so okay pay off your home early the the the, the lack of uh, uh food starting to catch up it me. is yeah i'm getting a little sleepy no just joking but just just for an example wake up i have uh i got him <laughs> we, we should Everybody do that to jade uh <laughs> You know, I'm going to use my personal house as an example. Do it. Okay. Just just high level, super high level here. So, you know, I own, uh, mm -hmm. owe about $500,000. Uh, my house is worth double that. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, about a $3,000 mortgage payment, right? Um, and I make decent income every single month. So the $3,000 mortgage payment is not a, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of disposable income. So I can live like that, make the $3,000 payment, still start paying down the principal, obviously, because that's part of that payment, and uh, go take that other money, that disposable income, and go live or go invest or do whatever I want with it. Um, or, or I save every single freaking penny of that leftover mm -hmm. until I get $550,000. And then pay it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, mm -hmm. I, who knows when that could be, like you said. And like, for a lot of people, that's, that's yeah, it's going to be <laughs> years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... um. It is not a way to do things if you, again, if you're super scared of debt and you're super scared of the world and you are okay to pinch pennies and retire at 65, then do this. This is yeah. awesome. It gives you simple steps to do it. But if you want more out of life and you want to do what step seven is, which is build wealth and mm. give. Step you're not, seven, you're, yeah, 30 you're gonna, years later. Yeah, you're going to be 62 years old and you're going to start building your wealth when you could have yeah. done it 40 years earlier. So um, 
not a huge fan of the plan. I've seen it before, but as we kind of go through it again, um, I'm sure there's like incremental steps in yeah. between, but they're pretty open ended and not ideal. For sure. Not the Burr's method. That's for fucking sure. That's for damn sure, Prim. Mm hmm. Word to your mother. All Anything right. else well, you we, got? we dove deep on, on Dave there a little bit. Deep a little and deep, hard. Deeper, deeper than we thought. So uh, that's a new area for you. Mm. Questionable. <laughs> How many awkward pauses could we have? All right. Speaking of awkward, let's get into Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, Steen. yeah. So anyways, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this, but we do want to get to um, like current topics because the majority of people listen to the episode the day or two it comes out, and then they don't fucking listen again or share it with a friend. Right. So um, pretty big news, though. Obviously, there's some pretty big names, and I'm, I don't want to go too much into it, um, yeah. but everybody knows Jeffrey Epstein, the disgusting human being that he was. But the crazy part about his disgustingness was he had his, his webs in so much of society and so many wealthy people. And um, so a lot of people on um, this list that is that was just released are like people that like know him. Like I'm not even we're not gonna go. Well, let's just talk about the two presidents are on there. And I I didn't hate Bill when he was president, but Bill's um, stuff is a little more like relate like on the plane and talk of girls and things like that. And um, the like Trump stuff and we're not like going hardcore Trump here is more of like he knew him and like I don't think like they're not all everybody named here is not people that like were on his island with him these are just people he associated with i don't know if you knew that part of it or not but i, um, I no I'm, i don't I, I haven't followed it too much but uh, yeah i could i can just read these names and kind of see the differences between some of them yeah like like, like leonardo DiCaprio's on here just yeah he knew him because they were in, michael jackson yeah they were, yeah they, <laughs> there's yeah. a difference yeah they ran into circles together but like nobody's saying like leonardo DiCaprio did anything wrong they're like well, did Bill? Maybe not, but like certain people, they're not. They're not saying they did. And um, Stephen Hawking, did you see that podcast with that guy? No. Oh gosh, you know that the redhead guy from Dave. Uh huh. And like his uh, Asian buddy, they do that hilarious. Yeah. Podcast. Gosh, they were going at the Stephen Hawking thing, and he was doing like the impression of him, and he's like, "Oh no, get me to your island!" Like, he was oh, like I'm boy. not doing it, but it was it was rough. Those guys, they can't pull that off. We cannot pull that off. Yeah. So, so yeah, quite the list of names. You want to name them off? Yeah, we can. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's public data. We're not like ousting anything, yeah. but like the crazy ones to me. Yeah, we don't. We don't have any insider knowledge. No, yet. the crazy ones to me that I think, from my understanding, just following it and having my wife send me TikToks about it from actual news sources, which who knows how legit those are, um, are the people that are like the big names that are actually, I think, like known to like maybe get into what he was getting into and that yeah. is um the uh, prince andrews uh who was the son of the queen elizabeth and mm. and and bill clinton yeah. and and uh, the donald thing who knows um dave copperfield i heard is like a little bit more up like the close like he's not responding to comments mm. leo caprio i don't think is anything i don't know that gore would be either hawkins is an interesting one yeah. um, stephen hawkins michael jackson I would assume was probably Doesn't involved. Doesn't matter much anymore. Yep. Um, Kevin Spacey, I know he had some interesting yeah, things go on, so he, he could. Um, and then George Lucas again. Like, there's, you know, some big, pretty big names is the interesting thing. Like, I've seen, have you watched documentaries on Epstein? Like, I how he made yet. all his money? Like, they're like, mm -hmm. he was a normal dude until like his 40s or 50s. Oh, then, I watched that one that was out like a while ago. Yeah. Is that the same one that's got retrending, or is uh, that a new a, one? There's a couple of them. The okay. one I'm talking about is the one from a couple years ago. I, I, I watched that one. But it's just wild how he just like, Manage like somehow he just basically got dirt on all of them either through his connections or what he brought them in on and then yeah. was able to make money on all yeah. of them. It's wild. Yeah, it is wild. It's the only one that's he's like the like, only person that's ever like money? well it's the only yeah. like there's a reason it's not common because it's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. All right. That was it. Riddle me. This is the fun part. This is where we're oh, gonna boy. make this is where we make shorts out of this and we're not, we're not going to cut them short. If they're a couple minutes or a couple minutes, we're going to riddle Lucas. So this is where I try to stump Lucas. All right, Lucas, ready for three riddles. He usually gets one right, one wrong, and one maybe. Oh, boy. If you throw a white ball into the Red Sea, what will it become? Mm. I, hey, I'm just going to say a white ball. See, that's the it's wet. It'll become wet. Yeah, like not going to change. But it's wet. It is changing. It's wet. So there's. So that's the maybe. I don't think that's the right one because it's you throw a ball into a sea. What is it? it it's wet. So it's it's not like the colors. I think just throw you off. You're wet. Not right now. <laughs> All right. What kind of band never plays music? I think he'll get this one. Yeah, I think so too. I think I know the answer. I'm gonna say what it also could be, but I think I know. It's showing off now. <laughs> I think it could be like um, a choir. 
Okay. Um, Because they don't play music. They're all vocal. Okay. Right? That's not necessarily playing music. Okay. Or a a cappella group. Okay. I guess they kind of, but the the correct answer is a rubber band. Yes. Uh, You got that one right. That still does. You still got the first one was your iffy. Now, are you going to get this next one? (laughs) Dude, have you seen how long it is? I have it. I'm looking now. It's so long. Like, that's what she said. You have things I have to think about for this one? I exist only in the future but am always approaching. So I exist only in the future, but I'm always approaching you. I can be chased, but you can never catch me. I have no size, yet I can fill the grandest room. What am I? Um, let's, uh, for, for To try to help you a little bit, don't even worry about the no size, grandest room. So I exist only in the future, but I'm always approaching. I can be chased, but never caught. So something in the future, it's not tangible so i like um, my mind goes to like uh not death but like a like a like a goal or is that on this uh, no i I, actually now i I, i'm i'm not surprised you didn't get this one because you get these but i I think you're gonna be like damn it Uh, yeah i think i could get this one if i had some time to think it's tomorrow Mm, yeah, I wouldn't have got that. You don't think so? It's no. in the future, always approaching. You can never get maybe, there. Maybe, maybe. Like, because it's always like this idea of the future. I get where you're going, but like it's always tomorrow. It's never like you never actually reach tomorrow because yeah. you reach it as today kind of thing. So I, I that one, that one, when I thought he wasn't too mean. Dream, on you. Dreams is kind of the other word I had in my head. I can be chased. Chasing dreams, yeah, but I never. Can, I don't know how to chase tomorrow, but I know chase the dreams. I, I can't. Can I, can, I guess you. Can, catch your dreams yeah and chase so yeah it's that th- <laughs> this was a nicer one though he's been more no, that's good. M- he's been much rougher on you so than so i got a maybe i'm that this was follow the path maybe yes and no yeah for sure for sure all, all right. right i usually go three for three on true or false no you don't you have a 50 50 chance of getting everyone in but your, mine are purposely deceitful yours give you hints mine try to deceive no mine are purposely trying to deceive you yours are giving you hints to try to give you get it they're different. Well, if it's perfectly try, trying to deceive you, then just guess the other thing. But that's part of the deception. They're purposely deceiving could you making you think that. Hmm. Oh, boy. You're overthinking it. True or false, Sam? Bees have five eyes. Real quick, Tyler, do you get, like, excited to see our answer to these because you know them and you're like, what the fuck are they going to say? Okay. All right. Bees have five eyes. That would be false. You know that's false. They yeah. have three. Three, I, I was going to say. They got that one, two, three punch. Ah, bah, bah, bah. They do like, bah, bah, bah. There they, you go. Do, they, do bees die when they sing you? They do. Is that a real thing? Yes, that's Every a real kind thing. of bee or just certain specific uh, kinds? Not of like bees? sweat bees. Um, like like honey bees, though, for sure. Do they sting you because they're really mad at you? They like, yeah, that's why they. I, that's why if you don't mess with them, they don't. They don't sting you. Whereas wasps will just. Do they sting know they're going to die when they sting you? You think they do? Well, that's a good question, <laughs> right? How would I, I mean, know? I mean, I know. I know bees are really. I think smart. they do. That's why they don't sting you all the time. Bees are really freaking smart. They have to be very and committed. So are ants. Very committed if they're gonna. If they're gonna sting you, yeah, they must. Like, you must did some real like bad kamikaze style. Yeah, it's like a whole. Their whole half of their body is yeah. their stinger. And they're sticking it in you. Yeah, and it just comes off. And it hurts a little bit, and then they're dead. Like, you lost that bee. Yeah, you lost that battle, unless you're allergic. Yes, then, you then know, maybe then both lost. Tie. There's a no win. There's a no win. <laughs> There's no win-win scenario there. All, All right. right, go ahead. All right, there are more trees on Earth than stars in the Milky Way. That is a good one, and there is no fucking way, no. Well, what, what about that uh, dis- intentional deceitful thing? It could be, but I just I've been watching that um, that thing. There's, I mean, I guess you can plant more trees, but there you also cut trees down. So I don't know what the the net positive of trees mm. on the Earth are, but yeah. there are so many stars in the galaxies. I think there's more grains of sand. There's that's more stars I, than grains yeah. of sand. That's the that's the analogy that I heard. So there's it's got to be more grains of sand. There is tree. There are trees, right? I think right. So then, therefore, more stars than there are trees. You are correct. That well, the, false. just that this is interesting. We should use like uh, if we have like an uh, like maybe one of our topics for the new show should be like obscure. Like by the way, we're creating this whole new show. We should talk about every episode to get people hyped for it. Anyways, we'll do that at the end. But um, uh, like, there's so many stars out there. It is insane. That ancient apocalypse. Watch it, Netflix. You'd have to watch it. I don't have to. I don't have to do Well, anything. you should. You have to do certain things. Usually when people tell me I have to do something, I don't do it. You have to not watch it. Okay. You can't I'll watch it. I'll check it out. I got to watch, watch it. You can't watch it. You can't. You're not strong enough. Okay. All right. Last one. True or false? China. 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 Recently surpassed. Oh, come on, T-York. He laid them up for me. Recently surpassed 
the United States for the world's largest economy. China recently passed the United for the world, United States for the world chart, largest economy. Boy went three for three. That is false. Yep, you are correct. As of 2024, the United States still leads China by almost 10 trillion it's not even in close, GDP really. and 67,000 in GDP per capita. And so, so the whole China-U.S. thing is China's in more debt than the U.S. per GDP. So you should like them better than the United States. Well, have. no, that's my point is like they're, uh, we're so much further ahead of our economy than theirs. Um, and our, uh, yeah, I think we're like, I think it's like 10 trillion more or whatever, Lucas, but I think it's like 26 and or 24 and 14. So it's like, it's not like 90 and 10, 90 and 100. It's like 40% more, mm -hmm. you know, that 10 million is on a lower number. So right. I think it's, or 10 trillion. So it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Hey, productivity, bro. Well, fucking. That's what we do. California's got the fifth biggest economy in the world, just the California, out uh, of all countries. Apple's bigger than France. Yes, there you go. <laughs> that is interesting. That was a fun one. You worked good there, and uh, I beat you as always. Since Great job. You deserve to win that What are we known known each other since we were about 9 or 10? I think I'm going to be here for about 30, 25 years now. Yeah, yeah. All right, so would you rather, Lucas, would you rather spend a day playing video games or board games with your family? Um, I think I want to pick video games. Okay, I kind of thought you would. Yeah, what about you? I'm going board games. What would you play? Which ones? I think just if it's all day, you're gonna play everything from Monopoly to Pictionary. To, yeah, and and yeah. it's just uh, more interactive. Yeah. And uh, I never was big into video games at all. I didn't know last time I think we talked. You played like Halo and stuff. Like I mm -hmm. played like a little bit of Madden here and there, and but not a ton. And then. Um, like you're gonna you interact way more video games and things or way interact way more personally in in you know actual board games and my family doesn't even play video games so it'd be really weird. Cool. Cool. All yeah, right, you I'm, go. I'm gonna go video games. I don't, I'm, I'm okay with that. I haven't played a video game in like 15 years, but then my son started to get interested in it. It's been a lot of fun and it's been a way for us to like connect and we can all play Mario Kart and jump on and there there is a lot of. Inter interaction there, I would think, but maybe not as much as a board game because you're not like staring. Well, yeah, person, that's but. if you're doing, and if you're doing like Wii Bowling or something, yeah, or like that, there is. But I, um, that Wii Bowling is probably the only video game I've played in the last 20 years, yeah. So. All right, cool. All right, would you rather, um, okay, if you had to eat jello or spaghetti with your hands. Which one would you pick? Would you rather Probably eat Jello, Jello with your hands or spaghetti? Probably with your Jello. Hands? I feel like you can take chunks of Jello, eat it, kind of clean the fingers a little bit. Go, but spaghetti, you're, you're, I, you're. I I do eat Jello with my hands. Have yeah, you, a good old fashioned Jello shot. Yeah, you just you just Bop. suck and lip and throw yep. it back. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so done. It has been done. And Jello shots are kind of a thing around here. Yeah, for events. Yeah, like right. it seems like once a month, Robin's in our fucking kitchen up here making Jello shots. For sure, yeah. spaghetti would be a mess. Like I just picturing that elf scene. Yep, where just, he's just like got all the syrup and pop tarts and candy and just shoving it in his mouth. And then he like actually like eats some of it like for like the it's the part of the movie, but it's all real stuff. He like puts it in his mouth and like kind of oh, swallows yeah, something yeah. and adds more. Yeah, because like, mm. <laughs> when he it does look good right when now. When he drinks to me. the soda, it's even it. obviously going down the side of him. But that he's actually eating, which is yeah, funny. I would eat that. Right People now. are probably dying watching so that. So hungry. You will, yeah. Right now, you would eat it. I would eat would it. You eat I would what, eat both with my hands. Would you eat what what Elf ate? Wolf Absolutely. Early, with the stuff on it. Yeah. So spaghetti, syrup, chocolate. Um, yeah, it'd be good. Uh, Pop tarts. I'm not saying I would eat it, but right now in my head, if it was like if no I, food I could or taste this, it in my mouth right now, and it, it, I feel like it'd be good. Your mouth watering a little bit. Yeah. Take a drink. All right, I'll go last one because I think I'm up. Would you rather have? A, a lot of mouth stuff. Would you rather have a mouth that could only open for an hour a day or only be able to sleep one mm, hour a day? Gosh. Both of those suck. I like the fun either one. These would both suck. These would suck. Depressing. I, I don't think you can survive off an hour a day. So you're sleep. saying, so you'd you be would logical, die. you would die. So you'd rather live than die? Live. And But what would you spend? How would you navigate that hour a day open? I love you, love you, love you. Tell the people you love and then get the work done and then just, A lot you know. of texting, mm -hmm. a lot of text communication or hand signaling. Oh, and the other thing is today with AI technology, spend an hour recording yourself, go through technology, you can type things out and it will sound just like there you're you talking go. to people. That would help. I was thinking like eating too. I don't know if that counts, but like you just hook up something like you'd have to wear like a like a like a feeding tube mm -hmm, that just to get efficient too. see i don't like the negative ones it makes me sad both of those would suck it, i would obviously want to live and i would only open my mouth for an hour yeah same here what happens if you got a cold though and your nose is clogged up die 
Oh, you're talking about breathing. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of a mouth breather anyway, so, so you, would, you would need like a like a straw. What? You but need, your mouth's open then. No, it's not. It's closed around the straw. It's just got a hole. Well, then you wouldn't need a Same feeding tube. Same with the tu- feeding tube. Yeah, so yeah. You, I was thinking a feeding tube like your belly. Oh, straight to it, huh? Uh-huh, that's what a lot of people do. Yikes. Well, a lot of people, people have to have that done, dude. Uh, that would be way better, actually. In your belly? Yeah, then you just taste sticking it out of your mouth all day. Well, either way, you're, you're not going to have a good life. No, both these lives suck. <laughs> yeah, they do. I feel very you're fortunate. You're so dark, Tyler. It's dark and breeding. No, we got to get the motivation first. I'll just... Oh, what? Oh, Shane wrote oh, that one. Shane. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, dark man. Dark, dark Shane. Dark twenty-year-old Shane. All right, so Lucas. Yeah, yeah. Never. This is the motivation Monday. I did it again. Sponsored brought to you by, by <laughs> sponsored by SamChat.io. Go there to go. SamChat.io, and it's uh, our brains because you're on a lot of YouTube videos with me at the beginning. It's our brains in AI, and you can ask it any question, and it will give you any answer. It's ran through OpenAI, and it's based on thousands of hours of youtube videos so go check it out samchat.io very cool cool all right lucas yeah never be limited by other people's limiting imaginations yeah i think that's i like that i think um gosh there's and this could go a lot of different ways like surround yourself with with positive people right you don't want to you don't want to be in an environment where people are always talking about what they can't do and mm-hmm. can't accomplish you know we want to be around people like us that we're always talking about hey what, what can we do what can we build this is possible um so but that can definitely rub off on you no doubt i think um um in in no matter who, the, the strongest person in the world ment- mentally that would rub off on if they get a consistent dose of uh people's limited imaginations so um to me, step one is just to have that be limited in your life mm-hmm. and to surround yourself with people that don't have limited imaginations and they fucking imagine with you because it's fun. Yeah, and like I think people that have limiting beliefs in like what you can do, if you understand that their limiting belief is what they're like, it's it's based on their experiences, what they think they can do. It's not really based on what you can do anyway. So you shouldn't really take their opinion. Does that make sense? Like if like, oh, you can't do that. The only reason they would say that is because they don't think they of can course. do that. So yeah. that that's it's nothing a to reflection do with, on themselves. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. It's a yeah. reflection on themselves. So let's talk about the app, uh, podcast we got, or the new show we got coming out, and then I'll, then I'll fuck with Jaden. Um, so we are going to make this a show. I'm super excited. Lucas knows a little bit about it. We're still hammering out the details, but we are going to make this like a show. It's going to be a mixture. You ready? What's a mixture of Lucas? It's a mixture. It's a real estate and uh, um, entrepreneurship version of Colin Coward show, Pat McAfee show. And what was the other one, Tyler, we were talking about a little bit? Uh, Cowherd, McAfee, and then it was somebody. I don't think it was a sports person, but anyways, um, Anyways, it's going to be like a show where there's segments. There's going to be, I think we're going to do like an hour and a half every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I don't hope Lucas will be able to be there for all of it, at least the majority of it. But we're going to have segments and people and sponsorships. We're going to have guests. We're going to have, you know, a ton of like, we're going to be on like the whiteboard. We're going to be streaming live on YouTube. Um, we're going to uh, put it on podcast platforms that day. We're going to do like best of, and it's going to be an hour and a half. So we're going to have a ton of content. We're going to like have guests and we're going to like, have like i said the whiteboard up we're going to do current topic things we're going to mix sports and business together and we're going to like almost like espn interview style with people with like little little boxes there's going to be a stat line across the bottom so we're going to make it a damn thing and i'm excited about it it's going to be a lot of work and effort but it's going to a lot of short form content is going to come from it and this podcast i think it's fun and good and people that are watching it are enjoying it but just it's just not growing like there's it's fun to do and i appreciate every single person listening i really do but it gets 50 views 100 views and like 800 listens or 500 that's just it's a lot of work and energy for you know for less sure. than a thousand listens an episode so i think we have to up our game to get to that exactly next level. it's just just part of what we do we're on episode 145 right now is so, that right yeah yeah give or take right so um and to look at where the show is now compared to where it was on episode one it's just uh just a huge transformation and we're going to continue to just do that, that next level of, yeah. we're always like we're in our lives and businesses we're in like growth mode and that's yeah. what this next thing is growth is going to be a lot of extra energy and effort so yeah that's awesome looking forward to it be good it'd be a lot of fun it'd be a lot yeah. of fun so you think he'll hear it should i get him all right just in case you're wondering we make i cut i'm gonna like pretend to like be mad at lucas and see what Jaden does because he's uh he's he re, he's very reactive you got him 
Is that what you? I thought you were. I didn't know you were pretending to be mad at me. I thought it was some other thing that you. Were well, should I not pretend to be mad at you? Or maybe just I don't know. Because like that would like. Or freak, maybe like both of us even. That like, would be like freak him out. Yeah. As opposed to like me being mad I'll at somebody like, on my phone. Right, and I'll just be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Are you fucking kidding me? Good lord, that's fucking. He's not even. Demon. All right, well, no, no one, no one heard us. They're, I guess they're just so used to you. Yeah, <laughs> screaming. That's all right. That failed. We'll do it next time. Dude, but you're gonna break something. Did that fall off? All right. Well, Sam's mic dropped. He threw a whole bunch of stuff here in the podcast studio. No one paid we'll attention. We'll try, try it next time. I slammed the table earlier and people looked. <laughs> you just spit yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. I slammed the table earlier and everybody looked. Maybe yes. we should slam the table next time. All right. Let's not try it again. How about that? So ever, never again. Nah. We're gonna, we're gonna put it. To that one. All right, we tried. All right, see ya. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We hope you got some major value from our conversation. If you love what you learn, make sure you like, rate, review the show, and help us spread the word by telling a friend. If you'd like to learn more about working with me inside one of my programs, we'll have those links in the show notes, along with all our social media handles, so you connect with us there for free. If there's a real estate question you'd like us to answer, feel free to send us a message, and we'll cover it in an upcoming show.